We want to start off with a reminder that we are not doctors. Before you make any changes or try something new, always consult with your doctor and medical team first. Chronic illness can vary from patient to patient, so it's always best to consult with your own doctor for what is best for you. Hello and welcome to IB Determined. I'm your host, Mason Harvey, and I have Crohn's disease. I speak from the role of a patient. And I'm your other host, Michelle Harvey. I'm Mason's mom, and I speak in the role of a caregiver. And we told you guys last week that we're going to be heading to somewhere special Mm -hmm. for Mason's birthday. Mm. And he does probably look a lot older now to everybody. (laughs) 15 then. (laughs) It's just incredible the difference a birthday makes. But anyway, so for his birthday, he had wanted to go to Club 33 at Disneyland. And we were fortunate enough to get a reservation surprise this it was and what's even more surprising is it was our third time yes there (laughs) this time last year we couldn't figure out how to get in if we would ever go to club 33 and here we are a year later and we've just going in there three times the third time yeah and it was delicious it Mm -hmm. was very good oh good and it was uh probably something we should talk about another episode because there are so many good stories i think it would be great to share yeah all about all the cool people we met too yeah like cool people i really do think it's worth it and i kind of like to keep this focused on the das pass and um so because since we're kind of like disney themed and we're still talking about that it's perfect timing to talk about the das pass and what that is exactly Mm -hmm. And so we're going to kind of discuss that today, the changes that are coming with that, and in particular with IBD, just specifically US. to us. Or and, anyone else with IBD. Right, right. And so that's kind of the direction we'll be taking. So yes, Club 33 was amazing. amazing. And I learned uh, two things. I really like Red Snapper and Scallops. Yep. And Salmon Caviar. Oh, and Salmon Caviar. Yeah. It has some like, oh, it's salty. I'm like taste salt but okay yeah he loved it Mm -hmm. so that was pretty pretty cool so that was good yeah so we'll have to share that and maybe do some pictures and stuff like that in another episode so we can tell you guys all about that maybe just like a few pictures because you don't want to give away the club 33 secret no we've already shared some so we don't need to like share too many going to club 33 is like it if you know what it looks like inside it's not as magical because going to club 33 and seeing club 33 in person yeah and seeing what it was what it's hiding you know mm-hmm. is part of the experience you're not going there be like oh well this is here and that's over there well we all know we know where everything is you want you it's a it's cool to feel like you're seeing everything for the first time yeah and i think we want to save that kind of magic for all of you it's about 33 magic yeah that's that's a huge part of it and we're gonna switch gears here and uh this there's no disney hate here no. today I, I want to be very clear. This discussion. Yeah. And I don't think anybody from Disney is going to be listening, but in case they are, I really hope that our words would be heard and our concerns and an understanding that uh, maybe there's some things that were not considered. And hopefully you'll maybe hear a story like Mason's. So, what does, like in your own words, what is a DAS pass? And I'll go into more of a definition, but you know, just in your own words. But basically, what it does is you sign up for the DAS pass at whatever station there is you sign up for these passes. And um, you have this little thing on the phone that when you scan it, you can go into the lightning lane, um, ride faster than the normal lane, which I think that's important because if you, uh, if I had, was in a flare, um, I have to go to the bathroom more often. I don't, it might be my joints hurt. And I don't, I can't wait that long in a line just standing there. Right. Um. So I feel like, uh, it's meant just to get you to the ride faster so you can enjoy more time while you're there. Right. And I think that's a pretty good explanation of kind of how, you know, just what it is, but what it stands for. So we say DAS, it's D-A-S. Mm-hmm. So we looked this up to make sure. Everything <laughs> was right. Correct. Yeah. It is Disability Access Service. service. And we'll, I'm going to go into that a little bit more. Kind of where Mason started, we're going to go into that a little bit more in depth. Mm-hmm. But I want to start off because, again, this is from an IBD perspective, and this is how it affects your trip to Disneyland because it does. And it doesn't just start at the park. It starts at home. So what we're going to start with is like we have a magic key. Yes. And which we are so fortunate to have. And I think we we have the one that's about $500 a person. And if you know the prices of tickets to Disneyland, you know that's that's not a bad deal. (laughs) It's pretty good. Yeah. 
And so the thing is, we have a pass though. It is for SoCal residents and it has days that are blocked out. So like we can't go on weekends. Mm-hmm. We know that. I mean, we know all this when we purchase this. So this is not a, this is not a complaint yeah. at all. This is just explaining why if you have IBD, there's already different hurdles. We're already different. We're not like a normal person mm-hmm. who would be using this pass. So I looked it up. And according to Walt Disney World Magazine, for our key, and we are, like I said, we're the SoCal, so I believe that's Imagine is the name of the key. We are blocked out 217 days in a year. Wow. There's 365 days in a year. 217 of those, we cannot go to Disneyland. And that's, that's a lot. It is a lot, right? So that that leaves us 148 days that we can go, mm-hmm. which really isn't bad. And it's, you know, it is during the weekdays, which is fine for us. That's how it works. So for the normal person who buys a this, this Imagine Key, they have 140 days they can go to Disneyland. For us, we do not have 148 days because you have mandatory like treatments, mm-hmm. hospital days. Sometimes you might not be feeling well. I'm not even including those. So yeah. strictly speaking from just going to the hospital, Mason, it's like these are your hospital visits that there's 24 days we cannot even go to Disneyland. And that's if we go, that's for two days a month. Sometimes we go three days a month, sometimes four. It depends what it is. And yeah, you can't really like say, well, I'm, it's always unexpected if you're going to go or not. Right. Uh, these are set. Long. These are set. Like we have the unexpected days yeah. that I'm not including. I'm being fair. and I'm not including yeah. those here. If you have IBD, you understand that sometimes Things change very quickly. You might have your days where you're like, well, we're going to get the injection today. We're going to get the infusion today. Mm -hmm. And then a week before your doctor might be like, well, we should have a talk. So how about you come down this day and we can have a talk. Right. Or you have to get labs. Uh, Yeah. Sometimes it's like, oh, we need him to come get labs. Right. So an MRI or something like that. So we're just saying at a very minimum here, there's 24 days a year. Mason out of those 148 that Mason cannot go for sure. Mm -hmm. And there is potentially a lot more. We're just not factoring that in because it's it's kind of like we don't know what that would be. Mm-hmm. But I do know it's definitely more than that. So if it was two to three days a month, just say, that leaves us with 124 to 112 eligible days in a year. And so that's because of Crohn's disease. Mm-hmm. Simply put, that is because of nothing else but having Crohn's disease because of mandatory treatments Mason has to go through. That does not include flare days no. so if you're in a flare in a flare we've been asked this question by somebody like how long does a flare last and, and it's like say, well hmm. about a month maybe and yeah. you're like oh this isn't something no it's that... not like oh one day oh yeah we're good right tomorrow. this is not like ibs guys and so when something is triggered and your immune system goes haywire it can take a lot to get under control mm. so if you flare and sometimes like mason has flared twice in a year and you, I mean, you want to look at that as like 60 days potentially with two flares. I mean, that's, you know, and so really this number could come down quite a bit. I don't want to stick here too long and talk about this no. too much, but it's just to say before we've even stepped foot in the park, we're already at a disadvantage mm-hmm. with the way we can use our pass. And if that's not enough, there's something fun called the Disney reservation system. Mm-hmm. And you don't know a whole lot about this because yeah. I do all the setting up and stuff setting it up thank god i don't have to do it (laughs) and so you know back before 2020 and before mason was sick you could just go to anybody remembers this you want to go to disneyland you could wake up in the morning you're like hey let's go to disneyland let's Let's go go to disneyland Yeah. yeah it works and that would have been ideal after mason's diagnosis because it was so unpredictable and all of a sudden you need a reservation with our magic key we can make two reservations at a time so we cannot do more than two, which is really fun if you want to stay overnight at Disneyland, mm-hmm. guys, because if you want to go to like, like what we just did, we just went on an overnight stay there. We booked it four weeks in advance. So there was, because we had to book two days for that one night stay, we couldn't go to Disneyland any other days. So for like the whole month, those whole four weeks, we couldn't go to Disneyland because we had the two days booked for Mason's birthday here in April. It's a little annoying. It is. And so it's not like we could, even if you were feeling well or doing good, we wouldn't have been able to go. Turns out you were in a flare anyways. Mm-hmm. But 
the point is, is that you don't have that same flexibility and you, you miss out. And for people like us who are already missing out on so much, it is this, these little things like just suck up your time and it's very difficult. So we are kind of expected with these reservations to predict if Mason will be feeling well on these days. Mm -hmm. And we don't always know. So we have to book a date. And that's unpredictable. Yeah. And we have to hope that Mason is feeling well. And some of you out there listening who aren't familiar with this, you're saying, oh, well, if Mason woke up in a flare, um, can't you just cancel? And it's like, oh, we can. You can mm -hmm. the day of. But you get something called a strike against you. So I'm going to read you the policy that they have on the reservation cancellation system. This is straight from Disney. If a magic key holder has a reservation does not show up for that reservation date, you'd get a strike. According to the magic key terms and conditions, if you are a no-show for three reservations in a 90-day period, <laughs> you will not be able to make any new reservations for 30 days. Yeah, that's that's not good. No. That's like, and I mean, that's, that's their policy. We agreed to it when we bought the magic key. So I understand that. Mm -hmm. But what I don't think Disney understands is there are people like us who... One that's over a 90 day period, and that's hoping that these guys will feel great and feel well enough to go when your time comes up. If you have to cancel that and then say something happens in 20 days and you end up hospitalized and you have to cancel another thing or something. And so you get penalized. And that's not good. No. And it's not like we would just be canceling because we decided to do something else. It's like you're not feeling well from a disease. And so at any rate, this is difficult. So now mm -hmm. it's like, okay, now we have the certain amount of days we can go. Now we only have certain days we can reserve. And sometimes things are booked out. Like you can't even get in. So it's, it's our days are even more limited than what I talked about above with this reservation system. This reservation system sometimes blocks out days. And these were days you were eligible to go, but now you're not mm -hmm. because they are booked up and you can't go. So it is kind of a frustrating system. I, I know it is serving a purpose. And I'm not here to argue with that. I'm just here to explain. Yes. So I hope Simply that it's not explain. coming across. Yeah, I'm not like trying to complain. I'm just trying to say, hey, this is where we are coming from. And so we already face so many other obstacles that other kids don't face. Certain kids face other challenges and they may not have regular treatments and mandatory hospital visits. So they have more days open to visit. It just depends. And for us, being immunosuppressed is really challenging. Also is challenging because that limits things as well. And we'll get more into that too. So mm -hmm. it's um uh, it's a number of factors. And again, we're just relating this to IBD. There are many of you out there who may have something else that are listening and going, Oh, I get this because this would affect me too. So, you know, you've already spent just for our family fifteen hundred dollars and it is a frustrating situation. You only have a certain amount of days and and because of a disease, it limits you even further. And these are the kind of things that are invisible with this disease mm -hmm. that other people don't understand. They don't understand. They don't see it. Yeah. And it things that because it seems so simple to others and they don't realize. And so by the time we get into the park, we've already like felt like, OK, we've cleared all these hurdles. We finally made it. And when Mason was telling his doctor when you were going to go to Disneyland, one of the first times she recommended the desk pass. So this wasn't something I was familiar with. I really didn't know anything about it. I, um, I've i heard a lot more people are using it now. We are also one of those, but yes. that's because of Mason's diagnosis. Dis yeah, dis dis disability diagnosis. Yeah. Because the doctor uh, recommended it. Right. And so she was like, hey, do you know how this works? And we we're like, no. cool. You know? Yes. And then I was like, are we going to need a letter? And it was like, no, you don't need any documentation, which... Seems is, kind of wild. Yeah. And I get like there's laws with HIPAA. I get that Disney can't ask you what your disability is, what your particular issue is. I was, it was something we could have easily provided because we have all kinds of stuff saying. Yeah, we have our books, we have papers. <laughs> I mean, we have letters, all kinds of things from the doctor. Yeah, it would have been. That little book that's filled with all of these little appointments that we have to. Yeah, go basically to and tell stuff. you all about it, you know? So. I was very surprised. I'm like, wow. So we just have to explain why it's hard for Mason to stand in a line. It's like, okay. And um, so she was like, yeah, it's it would be very beneficial for him. So we were stoked. So kind of like what Mason already said, we're going to recap on that. You go, like you said, you go stand in a line at a guest relations. Um, they have like the little kiosks spread throughout the park too. And so yes. there, you can find these on your maps. And so you go and 
you explain why it is hard for Mason to stand in line. And I remember the first time I was like, well, he has Crohn's disease and he's immunosuppressed. And they look at you like, okay, so. And I'm like, oh, and like, we need to know why. he." So you're like, oh, okay. So I have to describe, unfortunately, for <laughs> like all the reasons why. And they remind you, well, you still have to stand in a line. And it's like, oh yeah, that's no problem. But it's it's a much shorter line and it is much safer for him mm -hmm. and it's easier there's other people in it yes and there's there's other reasons to which i'm going to kind of i don't want to jump ahead too fast but um but basically what they do is you explain all this to them they make a decision they take a picture of mason and they put the das pass under his name and they put whoever else is on your with your tickets with you that day with it so we can all ride with him yes. because a person who has a das pass has to ride uh, mason can't get it and then be like i want to sit this one out we all sit out if mason doesn't go we don't go that's how it works because we're not the ones who need the desk pass we're just guests with mason so that's how it works and then it's good for 60 days and so you get to repeat this process every 60 days <laughs> Yay. and they introduced an online system where you can call in and do it like a chat and people have sat in those chats sometimes for an hour, five hours just to meet with somebody. And I don't have time for that. I mean, I don't even want to get into all the other phone calls we have to make because of this disease and the things we have Insurance. to do. Yeah. And it's like, and now I have to do one more thing. And I I did try to sit in one time and it kept kicking me out. And uh, it was a pain. It I mean, was really a pain. And I'm hoping they work on that. I really, I, I really am because that's part of the new system. And so anyway, so we would get the pass and we only would right maybe like yeah one or one two, two. right i'm just there to eat food but you know yeah because there's a lot of things you couldn't ride because mm -hmm. when Indoors. you're suppressed and there's things it was like it's just not worth the risk and like big thunder is when we could ride on because yeah that was outdoors, outdoors you know? and so we do take certain precautions wash our hands constantly have hand sanitizer things like that but there's some situations that just aren't worth the risk. Mm -hmm. And so we don't. So it eliminates already for us a lot of rights. And some of you with IBD are on different treatments. So it wouldn't eliminate those rights for you. Yeah, you may not be different. immunocompromised. Right. Okay. Everyone is different. We get to look at a list and it tells you the wait time. And mm -hmm. so say it says um, it's a 70 minute wait. You know, you have 70 minutes. It's like, like, oh, yeah. So you're like, OK, so you put your name in. Mm -hmm. and it's not a front of the line pass. It's not like no. you pick this and you get to go over there and they're like, go here, to the very front. go to the yeah. front of the line. That's what it home. does is you essentially put yourself in line to ride this ride, but you don't stand and in the line. And while you're in the virtual line, you can go do other things like eat or... Hang out near walk, a restroom. Yeah, walk, <laughs> hang out near a restroom, walk around the parks, look at the Disney ducks. Yeah, yeah, and we do watch the Disney ducks because mm -hmm. there's a nice secluded spot where we can kind of hang out and... It's chill. Yeah. And so for us, that's where we stand in line, basically. So we don't go on anything else. It's not like we're booking this and then we're running to another ride. It's like we are waiting for the ride, but we're doing it in a safe way and near a restroom. And the other thing is when you're immunosuppressed, it's a shorter line. You're not standing in such close like quarters with people. Yeah. You're not... It really does help. So even though there's a small, smaller line to stand in, it's a shorter, there, there's just less risk. And so anytime we can mitigate risk and help keep him safe, we'd like to do that. So a line for the DAS Pass is much more preferred than the regular line because you'll have to stand the DAS Pass line maybe 10 minutes because when you get back in it, there is a little wait. Sometimes it's five minutes, mm -hmm. but you're it's not, not that 70 minutes that right, where you're exposed. Exactly. And so, and, and you get to have some food, you get to relax and you're close to a yeah. bathroom. Like, so like, say it does say 70 minutes. And it's like, you can return at 1 PM for your ride. Now say at 1 PM, you have to go to the bathroom, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So you go in there. It's okay. Like you can go ride that ride at 1 30. You can ride it at two o'clock. You can't book anything else. You can only book one ride at a time. But for us, that's fine yeah. because we're using it as it's intended. <laughs> We're not trying to use it as a lightning lane pass. Yes. And so for us, it's very convenient because if we're on our way to the ride, and he's like, I have to go or, you know, you, you can, and it's not like you miss your, miss your ride, you know, you can. And so that's really helpful too. So the line is just moves much quicker and it's much safer but it's not like we just went straight to that line. Yeah. You've got to like, go on. Oh, yes. We're, we're already yeah. here. We had to wait. Yeah. Just like everybody Everyone else. Was, and paper. yeah. And so it's not cutting in line. It isn't, you know, for us, 
we're using it properly. People who might be abusing the system are going to figure out, obviously, anybody can figure out ways to mess a good thing up. I mean, <laughs> that's just really, you know. That's how the world is. And so it's because of those people that things are changing. And that's really unfortunate because for the people this is working so well for and giving these kids and these adults a day of fun and something where they don't feel embarrassed or humiliated or feel different there it's really sad to me that because of these people abusing the system they get other people get blamed or yeah um, hurt for it and so so far and this is as of this is april 28th when we're filming this just to be clear uh 2024 so depending when you're watching this things may have changed because there are people that are um, starting petitions and are very angry about this and are going after disneyland for changes things may be different if you're watching this i don't know if they're going to re review it and maybe make changes but as of right now on their website what they have on there is that it says disney parks have an unwavering commitment to provide a welcoming inclusive environment and accessible experience for our guests das is one of the programs offered at the disneyland resort theme parks intended to accommodate only those guests who due to a developmental disability like autism or similar are unable to wait in a conventional queue for an extended period of time. That's basically what they've changed it to. Yeah. That's not the current one. That is what is, I think it's in June when this is happening, end of May, early June. We're not here to talk about who qualifies and who doesn't or be angry or feel anything like that. Um, I think the, the again, we're just talking about how this is going to affect someone with IBD. Yeah, how and, it affects us or... Yes, and I think it feels really bad because it feels like certain disabilities are excluded while others are welcomed at the park. It kind of feels like they're calling your disease fake. Right. Kind of. Like it doesn't matter. And so the problem is that Disney is deciding if your child or your disabled child can write something and how they will write it. They're not leaving that up to the child, the parents. And there, there was something mentioned that they'll have a return to ride pass. So if you know, Mason's in line and has to go to the bathroom, they will give him a return to ride and he can run out. Okay. Those of you first, what is the first, like, imagine Mason, you are in Space Mountain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Say you're in that line. Yes. And you have to go. That'd be a nightmare. Does that give you enough time to find a bathroom and get out of line? No. No. Right? Like, that is crazy. Anybody with IBD knows, like, when you say you have to go to the bathroom, it hits you fast and you don't have time. And that's going to lead to an embarrassing accident. It's going to lead to you having to probably leave the park because otherwise you have to buy new clothes. Um, there's, I don't know where you would clean up. I mean, I, it's it's not fun to talk about, but yeah. it's really cruel. Like, it is not something that would work. And it's this is like adults and kids could be humiliated and have really bad situations. And so that doesn't work. No. And I don't think that's been well thought of. And if you are immunosuppressed, it's also probably a ride. Like I just mentioned Space Mountain. You probably won't be going on that again because. And there's the, for, for being immunocompromised, the yeah. lines are so tightly packed, especially. Yes. To make it more convenient. Well, not convenient, but uh, right. make a uh, reason for space. For, yeah. Yeah. And so it's it's like, and I mean, this is again, we're talking about IBD, but I'm sure other people out there with other other problems yeah, and challenges they're facing, yeah, they are going to be like, yeah, we can't use that return to ride pass either. That's ridiculous. And imagine trying to find somebody to help you. Like, I mean, when you're tightly packed in these lines and you can't even get out, like it would be it would be ridiculous. So, no, sorry, Disney, that doesn't work. Yes, <laughs> um, uh, that's not something that would work for someone with IBD. And people with IBD, a lot of times, they may have anxiety. Mm -hmm. And the more anxiety you have, the more stress, the more stress you get. And, and you start to flare. You are, yeah. And so, and the bummer is, like, if you start to, if you start to flare, you go into a flare. This isn't like IBS. This isn't like eating something bad where it's going to clear up in a day or two. When you start to flare, like Mason said, it could be like 30 days. It could lead to some serious health issues. It could lead to hospitalization. So this isn't something that you take lightly and think, just let them stress out and let these people panic and get sick to their stomachs, quite literally. And uh, it's it's not worth it for a ride. No. I mean, so, so yeah, so 
basically that's what happens. You say, I guess I'm not going to ride the rides. And so like for us, we'll still go to Disneyland because we like, we love the cast members. Mm -hmm. They're part of a fun story. We'll get to share with you guys about club 33. Um, we love the magic of Disney, the food, the sounds. Um, it's it's all wonderful, but it would be really awful for us to not be able to ride things because we don't fall into a certain category uh, that they're now defining. Where we did, like just a couple days ago, we were in that category, and in a month from now, we aren't in that category. And we have to put Mason's health first, and so unfortunately, that might mean not riding rides. And every with IBD is different. Some of you listening out there are are it really just depends. Some of you may have the joint pain where you can't ride certain rides either. Or you might, you know, things might be eliminated to you and the world looks different. It's just not as Same. simple. Yeah. Yeah. And so I I don't think that Disney is some people have suggested this is a, a money grab. And I'd hate to I'd really hate to think that's true, but I know it's a business too. I know at the heart of it all, Disney is here to make money. They are you know, here to make magic for all of us, but they business can't just run for free. They no. always have to have. That and money. they need to pay their cast members fairly. There needs to be, you know, quality food that they're putting out now and, and things like that. So, so I get it, but it's. You can't uh, have to suffer for money. Right. I and I, I think what happened is with this lightning lane, because I've never used it. Uh, so I don't, I, I just know it does cost money. It, it does. And so I think what's happening is the Dash Pass people, because they put us into the lightning lane, Disney is getting frustrated because the lightning lane lo- lines are getting longer. Mm-hmm. And people who pay for the lightning lanes are going to get frustrated because they paid to have that advantage to go through. They It, it works differently in the Dash Pass. So lightning lane does not work the same, but we're put in the same line. And mm-hmm. so unfortunately, it's like, how do we make that line shorter so more people will buy lightning lanes? We get rid of the Mm -hmm. Pass people. I hope that's not the case. Um, That would be very frustrating. Mm -hmm. And so there's something else I wanted to bring up too, because people start to argue about this and I've seen it in the groups I'm in and it's very sad because there's parents that are saying, oh, this is fair. And your child just really doesn't need it. And all of a sudden these parents are becoming experts in other people's problems. Mm -hmm. And that's that's not fair. And it isn't fair to say, you know, oh, my kid's deserving. Your child is not because now they don't count under the desk pass. And so not and, only do these people not get the desk pass, they're being bullied over it. Right. It's almost like they're being made to feel bad because now these I see these parents and or, you know, whoever it is, these adults, and they're having to defend themselves and then give every painful detail of like their child's condition in a public forum to defend themselves and say, this is where my child needs it. And even after seeing all that, someone else will still be like, well, doesn't count. And it's like, oh my gosh. I mean, the th- and I like, I don't want to bring all of the different things up, but there are so many people that could use this DAS pass that are being eliminated. And just the important thing to remember is guys don't fight and, no. and support each other in this and don't judge and start telling other parents how their child doesn't matter because that's really hard for parents and caregivers to hear. Why would you even yeah. say that? You know, you know, it, it's it's funny how people get online, and there's a lot of good people too, a mm-hmm. lot of good behavior. This is not. I these are just the things that stood out to me because I was like, why are they arguing? Why are these parents making other parents defend their disability? It's like this is ridiculous, and it it shouldn't be this way. It's like, and it wasn't until this happened, and Disney said this is what qualifies, this is what doesn't qualify. Once Disney did that, kind of put a line in the sand where they chose children and they chose adults. And that's really tough. Some people have said it's kind of like a money grab by Disney. And um, Disney is saying it's because people are abusing the system. And so I truly don't understand how the new, you know, the new definition for the desk pass Mm -hmm. is going to stop people from abusing the system. But autism can be invisible. You may not see the child that, you know, so, so if you don't have to provide there because they're still not requiring documentation maybe people are abusing the system because you're not requiring uh them to show the paperwork of what they have that's what i think <laughs> i mean that's i i don't know if there's other answers too but me personally that's what i think and because if you, and if you did have a disease it would be so easy to yeah. just show you show them the work yeah look here i have on right. the phone if I have you, papers. obviously if anybody has a diagnosis they have a paper showing it, it this is not something that's going to cost you money to get 
or be anything that's something this is like if you are saying i have a diagnosis of this you will have documentation mm -hmm. super simple I have no issues presenting it for Mason. And if you were fake, you don't have documentation, you're probably going to get mad about it because right. you got caught. So this is what's interesting. So here's what Disney says if they catch you lying. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is determined if, if it is determined that any of the statements a guest made in the process of obtaining DAS are not true, the guest will be permanently barred from entering the Walt Disney World Resort and the Disneyland Resort and any previously purchased annual passes, magic key passes, tickets, and other park products and services will be forfeited and not refunded. Yeah, at first, that's like, oh my God, they're going to get permanently banned if you're caught that's lying. Huge. But how do how they catch them lying? How do they catch them? That's yeah, my how, question. At first, like, oh my God, that sounds horrible. Then you're like, wait, how are they going to catch right. you if, if you lie? If you don't require documentation, yeah. they're Hopefully not required to provide a diagnosis. They're just required to tell you why, the, you know, if, mm -hmm. if, if this is the parameters, people can pretend. They can still yeah. fake. And if you don't provide anything... Disney, how are you going to know? That is my question. The world question. is full with liars and they're the ones who hide it pretty well. Everybody. Yeah. According to Disney, this is the main reason. So if the main reason is people abusing the system here and they're trying to cut back on that. Because you ask to show that. How are they um, reinforcing well, this papers? policy? Yeah. The only real way, honestly, is to require a doctor's note. Mm -hmm. And I think even like your dad was like, well, some people might forge that. He's like, well, yeah. But it gives Disney reason fun. now to enforce their rule. Because mm -hmm. if they have it, if you try to do that and you forge the doctor's note, you have a reason. To there's the proof it. right there. And so that would be really the only way. Otherwise, Disney has to like, I don't, I don't really understand how they plan to enforce that. And yeah. people are going to lie? abuse it. The abuse is not going to stop. And so I think if that's the real problem, they need to really figure that out. Maybe take a note out of Universal Studios page and Universal does require documentation mm -hmm. for theirs. I mean, some people may be offended by this out there, but um, I think that's helpful. I think it's helpful. I do. I think it help would help Disney. And it wouldn't require cast members to try to determine if Mason can stand in a line when they have no idea what Crohn's disease is. Mm -hmm. I think it would be extremely helpful. And you wouldn't have to eliminate groups of people. So um, I think so that's really the only way to enforce that policy of punishing somebody by having documentation. And so otherwise, I feel like it's an empty threat and people are still going to abuse the system and it's just going to get worse because then they're going to have to get rid of the DAS pass for those people. And and um, Things so, yeah, work for no you need to really fix the problem. And again, I'm not an expert. I, these people no. at Disney have probably come up with all kinds of solutions. I'm pretty sure a mom and a kid from, you know, <laughs> San Diego aren't going to solve this problem either. This is just our input and our our view ideas. because someone with IBD um, having Crohn's disease is it's important to consider all the aspects of it. The only punishment right now, they're really, sh really only punishing the people who, who told the truth about mm -hmm. a disability. You're being excluded now because mm -hmm. someone else lied. And it's like, how is that fair? fair? And you're already, we're already at a disadvantage before we get in, you know, it's just like, it, it's tough. So I do love Disneyland. Still going to yeah. go there. No hate to Disneyland. Right. It's not hate. I just, um, I just don't think, I, I don't know if all things were considered. Um, I don't know the angle they're coming at this with, but I would hope because Disney has always been known for being inclusive mm -hmm. of everybody and all types and people that in the normal world suffer from terrible things and have ordeals to go through. They can go to Disneyland and be free of that. And, you know, it's, it's sad when those people will go to Disneyland and not be able to ride a ride. And I, I think that is not, that's not inclusive any longer. So anyways, that's how it stands as of today, as of the recording. Um, I hope things change. Hopefully. Yeah, I really do. I hope some thought is put into that before June hits. And that's basically all we're here to talk about. The DAS Pass, our feelings on it. If you have IBD, there's many, many things with this disease. There's pain. There is joint pain. There's, you know, well, abdominal pain. There are I issue, you know, all sorts of things. And so having that DAS pass means a lot. Gives these people a chance to just enjoy some life and be free of those problems. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully you'll consider that. And um let us know in the comments if yes. you know your experience with this. Again, no hate. This no is hate. not a just question. <laughs> yeah, just question this is that. like um we we really I, I think the the more you go in with anger people shut down a fight there's gonna be right more then it's more. just an argument this is not this is like to open a discussion and say hey let's have a conversation and i think that's more important is i would love to have a conversation with disney and sit down with somebody 
and answer those questions and not be angry and just uh, try to open that conversation up and and start that. But mm -hmm. let us know, you know, if you've used the DAS Pass, how it helps you. Um, even if you don't have IBD and you're listening, let us know. Yeah. And maybe you're listening, you didn't even know what the DAS Pass was. And you're like, <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> I could have been yeah. using that this whole time. <laughs> And so we were, I'm so glad his doctor told us and a few of our other friends, they were like, oh my goodness, this is what you guys need. And uh, it has been so helpful to yes, us. We're thankful for it. Yeah. So that's going to be it for today. We will probably be back to talk about Club 33 because that's a whole story. And I think that would be really fun to fun share with you guys. Story. Yeah. Kind of in the spirit of, you know, being Dis determined Disney. and uh, IBD and uh, Disneyland and magic and, and all that it's worth sharing. So yep. You guys are welcome to follow us on Instagram at Team IB Determined. And you can also jump in there and see our pictures from Club 33. If you start looking now, you'll find them. Yeah. And you can also follow the Reggie Project, which is where you can take a picture with Reggie, one that you download. And you can show us your journey. We can post pictures so other people can not feel so alone in their own journeys. Maybe you take a picture of Reggie. At Disneyland. There you go. Uh, or I know. Or take a picture of them at the hospital. Have one of, yeah. Yeah, we do, yeah, we do. The fun places you go and then the sad places you go. Right. Show what goes on in your life. Right. Because it's all part of the story, all part of the journey. And so share all of it. Share whatever you want to, whatever you feel comfortable with. So mm -hmm. check out the Reggie Project. And that's on Instagram, too. And you're also probably listening to us uh, right now, if unless you're watching us on YouTube. But if you're listening... Um, you're, you probably can listen on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, and also now uh, YouTube. YouTube Podcasts. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you are on YouTube um, and you want to watch us and hear us, uh, go to our videos. Uh, and if you and if you do want to watch us and hear us, still go to YouTube. Um, but if you are on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to be notified every time we post a video, make sure to hit that bell icon. Uh, subscribing, I think, does notify you when we post a video right. and it recommends us to you more, but it might not always recommend a video to you. So that way when you click the bell, the bell icon, it will always like, let you know if we release something. Right. Yeah. So, so there's that's, a difference there. Yeah. So just, just important because this is like breaking new stuff guys. And we do these once a week and we want you yeah. to catch up and hang out with us. And if once a week, and if anyone did hit that bell icon, uh, put in the comments what color it turned. <laughs> well, no, right? Yes. <laughs> so, is... yeah, please say hi. Uh, give us a shout out where you're listening from, why you're listening, um, anything like that. We'd love to hear from you guys. So with that, we hope you guys are all doing well out there, having a great week, weekend yep. as we're on. Uh, good luck at work, school, all that stuff, whatever you're facing the week. Um, we hope it all goes well, and we hope you guys will join us next week. For the next, next video. Yep. Yeah. All right. We'll see you guys next week on the next episode. episode. Bye. Bye. We hope you will stick around, tune in, and reach out to us with your own journeys. We are excited to give you an inside view of what it takes to be a caregiver and what it's like to be a patient. And most of all, we hope you'll maybe be able to play something you hear on here that might help you in your own life. Sometimes life changes and it's all about how you handle the journey.